The video you are about to watch contains depictions of spiders. You have been warned. Hello, Planeswalkers, and welcome to this episode of Da Bomb New Cards. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Loth, the Black Planeswalker, out of Adventures of the Forgotten Realms. If you like the videos and content I make, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when I make a new video for you. Loth is an interesting character, and like always, I'm going to review this starting out with lore. The cards don't really depict it very well, but Loth is probably the most important goddess in the pantheon of the Dark Elves. Loth is, of course, known as the Queen of Spiders. Dark Elves that don't follow Loth's dark path or do things that particularly displease her are doomed to be transformed into Driders, terrifying half-drow, half-spider creatures. Loth, throughout the course of the Forgotten Realms, has mostly appeared as an antagonist, but is generally one of the, as I said earlier, most important gods in the Drow Pantheon. I would say the lore and the different arts we have for Loth definitely help us experience this type of, you know, dread. I wouldn't say any of them particularly scream that she's a goddess, but that is fine too. And so I'd probably give a pretty high grade on the lore on this card, and I do find the direction they took the card in very interesting. Now let's go ahead and look at the card itself. Loth Spider Queen costs 3 and 2 black. She is a 4 loyalty planeswalker with a static ability that reads when a creature you control dies, you put a loyalty counter on Loth the Spider Queen. Now this is actually the only way to put loyalty counters on Loth the Spider Queen and it gives us a very good direction in which way the designers want us to design this deck. If we zero her, we get to draw a card and lose one life, which is just... Which makes her as good as a Phyrexian Arena, if only for that. If we minus three her, we get to create two 2-1 two Black Spider Creature Tokens with Menace in Reach. These can be good blockers that you can use to defend Loth, but they do drain almost all of her starting loyalty, so be careful about that. Also, if they die, they will help feed and grow Loth, you know, loyalty-wise. We've seen a design of this type on a Planeswalker before when we got a green-black Garuth in Throne of Eldraine. It made wolves that when they died, it specifically put counters on Garuk. So this is very similar to that mechanic and idea. If we minus eight Loth, we get an emblem that says whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more creatures we control, and that player lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. This is very interesting as there's a lot of life lost mechanics in the game. I feel like the way that last ability is written, it really wants us to run small, evasive, hard to block creatures and really only swing in with the bare minimum of them each combat. So if you say, for instance, run a changeling that has unblockable or a creature with intimidate or shadow, you're guaranteed for that one damage creature to do eight, simply if it's not blocked without any pump spells or other aid. So I'm gonna take a step back to what I said earlier. I believe based on the fact that you can only put loyalty counters on Loth by having your own creatures die, that the general direction this deck should be built in is aristocrats. But you may want to focus on spells that make you token copies of creatures for your signature spells, or spells that are going to give your small army of creatures evasion. Now these are just guidelines, I really am excited to see what people do with Loth, because Loth is one of my favorite characters out of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and just because I see her built one way doesn't mean that's the right way. Now finally, let's talk about cost. Again, this set is so new and I made the mistake with Modern Horizons 2 of thinking the high prices prior to release were going to stay there. Right now, she's about $13.03. I have no idea how popular she's going to be in any format outside of Oathbreaker, so I don't know where that cost is going to lie, but I get this feeling that it's probably going to decrease after release. Having addressed everything we know about Loth as a card at this point, I think I would give it a pretty high rating. I would say this is like a B or an A plus planes Walker if you want to build something just fun and entertaining. I don't feel like it's highly competitive because there are certain bars to entry to actually getting loyalty counters on Loth and growing her big. And in mono black, it doesn't have quite as much access to proliferate as some other colors. Well, I hope this has been some help for you today. I'm going to put a video on the end card that hopefully leads you to something else you want to watch. 
And I just want you to remember, you're a planeswalker spark lights up my life.